Uh, proud of our football team today. Um, you know, obviously against an overmatched opponent, I thought uh, the most important thing today was Miami uh, and how we played. And um, number one, I thought it was a clean game. We had only three penalties, and, and I think two of those were at the end. Uh, very few missed assignments. Just, they just were just a clean, a clean game. And with all the people that got were able to get in there, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was key for us. Um, obviously, proud of both quarterbacks uh, in a situation where they kind of had to, you know, really both make their their debut. I thought both guys handled the offense very well. Uh, we had very few procedural issues, um, and I thought they distributed the ball uh, very well and showed what they can do down the field. And we talked about everybody around around the quarterback playing better uh, to help out that position. And I think the depth that we have with some of the weapons that we have. Um, is really starting to show and, and exciting for the future. Defensively, obviously, anytime you hold uh, someone without a point, that's a big deal. Um, again, you know, understanding that it, the, the you know the opponent was outmatched, but still, um, that's in terms of us and our responsibility and how we handle our jobs. Uh, we were more physical this week, uh, ran to the ball well, tackled well. Um, a lot still to correct, but uh, but a good feeling for everybody in that locker room heading into ACC play. And with that, I'll open it for questions. Coach, we're going to start first with Tim Reynolds from the Associated Press. Tim, go ahead. Hey, man. Um, you, you alluded to much of this, but you know, it, it has been such a rough start for you guys, and then you know, dealing with the injuries and everything else. Just, I, I know the opponent against us was overmatched. There's no question. But just the, the fact that your kids got some got, got a Saturday to enjoy that, that they got to see the results of the work and what what the work can lead to. How valuable. These games matter. These games matter in college football. These games don't just matter for what it does for Central Connecticut's program, uh, but it matters because it helps you with your developmental guys. I mean, it's you know when you don't when you play a sport that doesn't have an exhibition game or a preseason game, um, it's hard to get guys in the game at times, um, especially when you're playing tight games and everything's so critical. Uh, so be able to, to be able to play as many people as we did today. Um, you know, offense is so much about confidence. And I think it was obvious to everyone to see that we, we, we weren't as confident, the same confident bunch the first three weeks offensively uh, as we were a year ago. That doesn't mean that it's all fixed today, uh, but there is a good feeling in that locker room. There's a good feeling because not just because of the victory, not because of the score, not because of the opponent. Um, it's because of all the things that we emphasized this week in practice, the things that we asked them to do, the, our, our energy on the sideline, our enthusiasm for their teammates and for each other. Um, we were excited to play today. And, um, and that means that we're on the right path and our leadership's in the right spot. And like I said, our young guys um, are coming along and, and are going to continue to contribute to this football team. Manny, a quick follow-up. I know you obviously missed some guys' injury and at least one couple guys suspended. Uh, everyone seems to be talking about the fact that you could have played. Did you get them all in? Do you think everybody who was eligible got in? Like everybody that was dressed on the sideline? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to say for sure because I don't know exactly. Um, I, I would think that, man, I hate to say this, but I, I do believe that everybody on scholarship got in. Um, and I would say if not everybody in the, not, if not everybody did, very few didn't, uh, which is good. And, and I think the, the cooler thing is the ones that did actually, actually did a nice job, and there was not a large drop-off in our execution uh, regardless of who was uh, in the game. Um, the, the two quarterbacks, um, number one, I just, I thought they were both poised. Um, you know, sometimes you just tell just in conversations during pregame in between series, um, they handled themselves very well. They knew what was going on. I mean, both guys can obviously throw the ball. Um, a couple of decisions that both guys, you know, need to get corrected on, uh, but that's to be expected. And I thought the thing that was really exciting was making plays down the field. You know, um, I know Tyler hit the one to Rambo down the field, which was a really nice throw and catch. Uh, Jake had a couple down the field. I think he had the one to Jacoby. Um, so, again, you know, what we've been talking about all year is, is being more explosive on the outside lanes. Uh, they did that, of course. I think Tyler had two that went for, I think Tyler had two one play drives that, you know, one he, he flips it to Brashard, and, and I think his was on the screen to Cam Harris. So that's going to that's gonna make the yards per attempt uh, seem pretty good. Probably not sustainable, but really just proud of both guys. But more importantly, and, and, and to put a finishing touch on this answer, I'm proud of the team for the confidence they put in the two quarterbacks. 
because taking over for Derek King on, on, on Saturday is no small thing. Um, Derek is such a huge presence on our football team. And for our guys to rally behind Tyler and Jake shows how highly they think of those two guys. And that's based off of the evidence, evidence of what we saw in spring and in training camp. Thanks, Cam. Uh, man, just to follow up on Tyler and Jake, not knowing the situation of Derek will be available Thursday against Virginia, is this something you would consider doing again against the Cavaliers? You used both of them almost equally against the Cavaliers. Yeah, like you say, it's kind of a hypothetical right now. Um, you know, it based off the evidence of what you saw today, it feels like both guys, um, you know, we feel good about, and both guys, ne neither guy would not deserve to play. Um, so, that's something we have to watch a film, reevaluate, see where we're at, see where Derek's at. Obviously, it's a short week, quick turnaround. Um, and whatever gives us the best chance to win is what we'll do. Coach, we'll go back to David Lake from 24 7. David, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I was just going to ask specifically do you have an update on Derek King right now? Just how he's doing? Same thing. You probably saw him out there on the sideline. You know, he's, he's you know, limited in, his, in some of his motions and movements. Um, you know, I think the plan was to kind of. Give it some time, see how it settles down, and and um, and then we'll have we'll have an uh, an idea. I would imagine sometime this week, quick turnaround, so we got to get a, a, an idea for reps and practice and 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 all that. So um, I probably won't know more till uh, Monday, I guess later later in the week. I'm not sure. Coach, got two more hands up for you. We're gonna go first to Susan Miller Davis with the Miami Herald. Susan. Hey man, I saw uh, Derek out there. You would have to ask the quarterbacks when they're up here. I'm not exactly sure of the conversation um, that was going on, you know, in between. I'm sure he did. Um, his presence, was just, you know, being in the meeting rooms and that type of deal. Uh, what a great sounding board for both those guys. Um, you know, I don't know. He may take credit for calling one of those plays. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But, but uh, I, I, that's a great question to ask those two. Last one for you, coach. It's Tim Reynolds back in the AP. Tim, go ahead. Hey, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what the rules are as far as hours and all that. But logistically, what changes for you this week? Well, the week gets uh, condensed. So tomorrow is a Sunday. Uh, you would normally, you know, have slight introduction on your next opponent. You would spend a lot of time uh, digesting today's film, making corrections, a, a correction period out in the practice field. Um, this this film will be reviewed for 15 minutes with the players tomorrow, just some, some highlights and lowlights, and then you move on. And we'll be, on the, we'll be you know, out there tomorrow night uh, working on Virginia. And then it, normally we'd have a Monday off. Uh, Monday is now a practice day for us. Monday, Monday is a Tuesday, and that's kind of how your week goes. Monday is a Tuesday, Tuesday is a Wednesday, and then Wednesday is a Thursday into a Friday uh, because it all kind of happens fast. So everything gets condensed, uh, packaged in tight. That's a very challenging thing against a team like Virginia. Um, because they're one of the more, um, every year and year out, Bronco Mendenhall and his staff, they're one of the harder to scheme against teams that there are. Um, so multiple on offense, so multiple on defense. Uh, so it's going to be a lot to digest for our players, and that's why th that'll start. We'll be in as a staff um, first thing tomorrow morning, different than a normal Sunday. Um, it's just, it's, it's highly urgent right off the jump.